Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Ah! Lime water. Good Alaskan water with a big chunk of lime. Um, well, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Thanks for stopping in. Hello and welcome to all you new subscribers. Um, yeah, 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 the weather, yeah, but hey, I got my little window here. Um, so I thought, get out here and get my DT40 Suzuki on my Bay Runner boat all dialed in and lubed up and started up and fresh gas and whatnot and thought I better do that. Um, then I was looking at some of the items you're supposed to have in a boat and I need to go to the store and do that. And you know, hopefully this weather's going to turn because I need to get some fried fish. I ain't got no fresh fish in the freezer. I'm almost ashamed of myself for that. Right there in the backyard is the Pacific Ocean. He told me quit whining. You know, and when he said that, oh yeah, I ain't got no fish in the freezer. Now, I ain't never done it. But, you know, it, desperate times call for desperate measures. And I was just thinking to myself, wouldn't frog legs taste a little bit like fried fish? I'm sorry, Fred. It was a joke. I bet they do taste a little bit like fried fish, though. Somewhere in between. Fish and chicken? Hmm. That's a thought. Maybe come January. Huh. You have to excuse the noise in the background. The washing machine's running. I went out and even got me a... Uh, it's a, uh, you can't read that, but it's a old school needle. I took out the one that was in there, the needle and seat, and got me an old school one. It's got the brand new cork float. Then it's got the needle with the little E-clip in there. That we don't have ethanol here, but that's your ethanol clip that pulls it down from the old sticky ethanol. But I got the cork float. Old school. Mm -hmm. But I don't have the brass pin. I got the plastic pin with that one. I can get it in there. Come on. Why don't you go in there? Why don't you go in there? There it went. Yeah, she looks pretty good. That's pretty rat. Pretty cold rat. Now. I gotta go get me a gasket for this bowl. Okay, there we are. I got the aluminum topped carburetor back on. We took off the garbage radar with the plastic top and five screws. We'll do some more commenting on this in, in a little bit. But there's the one I just took off that wouldn't idle for poop. And it's actually 
one of two plastic garbage raiders that I took off. One and two and two. So, it's a common problem. Everybody knows about it. Um, so I went out and got out of my Iconics and got a, a, an aluminum one, an all aluminum, well, aluminum top body and the tin pan, uh, tin bowl. Put it on there, you will see what I see. Could possibly be something else, but I've had these plastic, I've had, had them do it a lot. Not a lot of luck. Bulb. And I don't know where to go with that. You guys in there? I'm gonna have to turn on the noisy sucker, so it's just part of the deal. I can't open the door today. Well, I can open this one behind me. It's pouring raining out. It's a pouring rain, blowing rain. You know the deal. Okay. I'll choke it with my hand because I ain't got the choke hooked up. There you have it. <clears throat> now, um, I 
I had several people comment and tell me that yeah the, the aluminum topped carburetor solid aluminum upper body would bolt right onto these I had one fellow say that I needed to change out the roller um, ain't sure why but this one is smaller for the plastic top it's a smaller affair you know this one's cracked but I went and got another one that ain't cracked off of another aluminum body so I did change that out now <clears throat> I had a couple people say, well, if you if you put on the solid aluminum bodied carburetor and it runs okay, then why don't you take one of these garbage raters with the plastic tops and goop that up temporarily with some kind of goop, you know, JB Weld, epoxy, something like that. <clears throat> And I think I will do that. Um, I mean, this is convince, convince you and me step one. I couldn't get the thing to idle with either one of these plastic top garbage raters. Um, another person commented and said, what about taking this, these tops, and taking a piece of uh, sandpaper and putting it on a flat surface like a, a piece of window pane or something figure eights and sand that down well I don't maybe on some of them yeah you might be able to do that I, boy I'm not sure I don't know if you can because there's this piece right here that sticks down into a slot, but I I don't know that that would have an effect. That's, I think, or is it? Yeah, that's where you screw. Well, on this one, you could probably do it. Because, see, this one, you screw that screw to hold the cam roller on this flat top. But on this one, it's got a plastic stud and you put a little rubber o-ring to hold it on so you could probably I might be able to do that something like that with that particular top but not with this one because you would need that piece yeah and if and if I file that down I don't know if you can see that that's where the screw goes in the hole coming right back at me and it's got a hump here and it sticks down and so if I sand that away I got no way to put that screw that holds the cam roller back in there but I could do that on that other one I think now the other thing is there are little bossments all you know formed into the plastic on here I don't know if that would hurt it or not all we could do is try um, the other thing okay I've got tons of these gaskets brand new What about doubling up a gasket? Might that fix it? So what I think I'm going to do in an upcoming video, probably the next video, it just depends on how bad, how bad I'm hearing them callings for over across the pond in the UK on that cutie little seagull. The calling. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. From Glen to Glen, and to your apple tank. I'm sorry, I get carried away. But yeah, I've got lots of these gaskets, brand new. Old stock, of course. Um, what about Dublin, Triplin? Um, I have done stuff like that. Doubling up gaskets and stuff. Um, I had an engine, I think it was an 18 or a 20, and this thing had super high compression. It was just a beast to pull over. And so I said, you know, 
I'm wondering if somebody swapped and, and this was a true Johnny root. It had like a green head, a blue center, and green intake. So, and, and a lower leg that was blue and a center part that was green. So it was a true Johnny Rood, and it had super high compression on it. And just made it a bare start. And I thought, I, I was thinking that somebody put the 18 head onto the 20, 25, whatever it was. And that I could see they would both bolt right up. And I said, well, I could create some volume by adding another head gasket in there. And I put that in there, and it it kind of took care of it. It, it. it made it, it got the compression down to where I wanted it, and then it started. So I've had, uh, and there's other places, I've had it, warped carburetor bowls that were leaking gas. And I just stuck an additional gasket in there. Um, and no more leak. And on a carburetor bowl, you want to do something like that rather than use the goop because a lot of the goop don't get along with gasoline. Yeah, yeah, I understand. They don't they don't they don't like one another. Another thing I do with gaskets and stuff, and I've thought about this on that on this, but I I, I don't think it would work. I don't know how I would do it. But I have generic gasket material, and I've got some of it that's made out of cork, and it's over an, an eighth inch thick. And that I've, I've done that where I've pulled off a thermostat that was leaking for whatever reason, pitted and stuff, and I couldn't get it to seal. Now on a T-stat, you could use the goop, but I just quickly cut out a nice quarter or eighth inch thick fat cork gasket and used it for a T stat gasket that was leaking. So I was thinking we'll do a couple tests. Since I've got two of these garbage raiders here, I'm going to goop one. I'm going to take tighten down them screws as best I can and around that whole back side, probably half on this side all the way around to half on that side and I'm going to goop it up. You understand? We'll put the goo. We'll put the goo to it. And let that dry. I'll use probably that JB Well Marine Quick Epoxy. So I'll, I'll goop one up real good. The other one we'll take, and I'll take one of those brand new gaskets, and we'll double up the gaskets on it. If we don't have any success with that, I'll get out my manual, and we'll do the supposed service bulletin fix on one and see what we get and uh, we'll move on there from there now this little engine now runs fine it 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 idles plenty good I can even adjust it further out there on the uh, tiller and then I can adjust it with the screw and uh, but it appears to be running cool since I took that t-stat out of there so we'll have to get a t-stat back in there but I believe the water pump on this thing is marginal or either the grommets up under the power head are marginal kind of corroded and folded in because even though it's running cool now without, without the t-stat it's still not peeing regularly out of the telltale hole it, it kind of goes starts goes I can blow air through and make it work and then it'll start now that ain't to say there ain't some garbage in my tank you know dirt yep I haven't changed that tank out in close to a year so but I mean this one's been sitting so long that I, I have to drop the lower unit and and I'm because it's getting a new water pump impeller and who knows what else we might find down there but as far as the engine running it runs fine with an all aluminum upper carb we'll do some testing I appreciate all the recommendation recommendation recommendations from all you Cody hackers thank you and we'll do those experiments and see where it carries us um, and since I've got a lot more to do on this motor cosmetically lower unit and whatnot gear oil all those kind of things this will be a something that we can these tests we can do in conjunction with me tearing this thing further apart to get it to cool properly and so forth so there we go
Carburetor on, garbage radar off, engine runs and idles. The old candles look pretty good, a little black. I'll spray them off a little bit and then I'm going to squirt some triclo in the cylinders. It should help her pop over pretty good, so I don't have to pull her and pull her and pull her. Okay. The old spark candles look good. These are NGK B8HS. That's what the old Zuki takes. Come on. Oh, look at you. Yeah. All right. So I got about a five gallon bucket of pine needles, moss, pine cones, oh. but now we just got to get it Put a bunch of soap in there. And she still got quite a bit. But I'll I'll let it drain a couple times. Squirt it some more. Let it drain. See there's a big clump right up under that my little stand there. Looking pretty good. Good enough to catch a, a halley butt. Yes, 
see what we get. The only thing I, I really found wrong with it coming to life is the uh, kill switch quit working. So I have to choke it to kill it, which makes me have to pull it two or three times to restart it. So I've got to get that kill switch replaced. So I'll get that done. Um, then. You'd think, you'd think my, my throwable cushion will pass inspection. Oops. So, I went and got a brand new one. So, safety first. You understand. Okay, hopefully we had you some little boats and outboards and boatsy boatsy outboards and outboards thingies in this video. And uh, I appreciate all the recommendations and hopefully, um, you know, I got out there, I had a little window of sunshine. I got out there and uh, got my boat cleaned out a bit my dt40 zuki all got all that wintertime fogging oil pumped out of her and some good clean gas with some startron and marvel mystery oil pumped through it and uh so i'm just waiting for the weather now and as soon as it does i'll put the repair stuff on hold we'll get out there and do some fishing and i hope you come along with us because you never know what we're going to catch out there in that specific ocean. You understand? Well, um, hopefully you found a hack in there somewhere. This one's probably getting a little bit long. So we're going to wrap this one up right here. And I want to say... So hopefully you enjoyed the video, and as always, you never, ever, ever, ever know what's going to come into this little shop. And that is one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.